Have you ever been to a wedding where it was obvious to you that the couple was doomed? What happened? Story 1. In fact, my mother's second marriage. The stepfather was drunk even before the ceremony began. His mother got scared in the middle of the ceremony. Mom fell when she was going to an appointment. The bartender was drunk by the middle of dinner. The DJs, bartending parents, were pissed that she was replaced by my aunt after she got so drunk she threw up. I was taken hostage by said DJs when they pulled out a gun to threaten my mom over an incident with their daughter. I had to save the special forces while my mother was crying hysterically and my stepfather was drunk and laughing hysterically. Story 2. The wedding has not yet taken place, but it seems that it is already doomed. My sister, 20, is getting married to her boyfriend, 17, who dropped out of school at 16 to play video games. He's been living with us for almost a year. It took him seven months to get a job, and he works less than 30 hours a week. I still haven't had a full conversation with the boy, as he spends most of his time at our house playing games in his room until he is anxious. And as far as I can tell, he has no future but Jimmy Jones, which he now working needless to say, I'm not a fan, and think my sister could have done much better. It seems that their only connection is the huge amount of candy that they breathe together. The wedding was announced a month and a half before the date a few weeks, and it was very lighthearted. They didn't even smile when they told us, and the man couldn't even say a word or look any of us in the eye. So far, they have done almost nothing to plan the wedding, and have left it up to my parents, who are both very busy. They haven't even received their rings yet. The wedding is supposed to be a backyard wedding of close family and friends, and they told us that basically everyone will be stoned and openly smoking candy the whole time. Maybe it will. But as far as I can tell, this is a wedding based on loneliness, not love. That is doom. Story 3. It lasted seven months. Edit. She was a barista, and he was a real estate investor who was worth a lot. She wanted a hooge wedding. He agreed. And 48 hours before the wedding, I came home to work to find her being scolded by my roommate. Hint. My roommate was not the groom. The wedding was all about her, about her, about her. To her, he could be anyone. If he had dropped dead on the morning of the wedding, she would have expected the best man to simply take two steps and take the groom's place. Story 4. My friend's sister married this guy who just oozed travel. We all silently attended the wedding and went through all the actions. The six people who were there after the ceremony were just silent. Finally, I spoke. Boy, did she marry a real jerk or something? It was like a dam breaking. Everyone breathed a sigh of relief and started talking about how just weird that dude was. I was like, boy, that cow is doomed. I was right. About six months after getting married, this jerk made about $1,200 for making one. 900 phone calls to loved ones and hasn't stopped making them. Story 5. Always knew she was bad. Told him he didn't care. The bridesmaids offered me a Coke at the Catholic Church on the morning of the wedding. The bride shouted at everyone on the festive bus after the ceremony. Her dad very aptly told the groom that he could not get his daughter back. After one year, she drank a box of wine a night. She would expect my friend to wash her clothes that she left on the floor and cook her dinner every day. Finally, after only a year, he packed up his clothes and left, never to return. Story 6. Oh, man. Many years ago, I worked at a brewery that booked a wedding reception. The place wasn't a dive, but it certainly wasn't a great pick-me-up. Basically, a bar with a smaller dining area and bar food. Therefore, the staff is waiting for guests at the wedding, but they will all be late. The groom was still miserably drunk from the night before. He clearly did not want to get married and did everything he could to thwart it. The wedding itself was delayed, probably because of his profuse vomiting. Finally, the dude made it to the aisle, but he had to bring a bucket with him. Yes, at this point, why would any of them choose to go through with it? Finally, the wedding shows. The dude is cow and belligerent. Everyone tries to laugh. It was very inconvenient, but I just work here. Anyway, the bride, I assume, had the brilliant idea to release the doves as a symbol of their union or something. Someone said nice words, and I'm not afraid of you. Open the door to the pigeon cage, and those birds did not move. The teacher tries to shake the cage to make them move, but these birds refuse to budge. Like these pigeons said, I'm sorry, we can't forgive this. It was a disaster and completely changed the mood of the party. Here's your sign, along with all the other red flags. It was a long time ago, but I think the marriage was dissolved after a few days. Story 7. I once worked at a wedding, 
as a caterer, where right after the ceremony, the groom and his friends went to the back and snorted a bunch of cola without telling the bride. The bride and groom did not speak during the entire reception. Everything was complete. Everyone was very rude, especially to us as a staff, and if these two are still together, I would eat my hat. Edit. Errors. Story 8. To preface, this wedding probably cost about 150000 Both of their parents were rich. The groom got very drunk drunk and started talking very loudly about what a huge mistake he had just made and that she would eventually divorce him and take all his money. His bride was standing about five feet away from him. Recreate an epic screaming fight in the middle of the dance floor between the bride and groom, their attendants, and their parents' siblings. The guests, including me, grabbed the popcorn. Guess what happened about six months later? Story 9. The marriage lasted three years. My family was invited to a family friend's wedding. Failure one, the bride, a bad person, and the groom's younger sisters hated each other. The sisters literally got mad at the wedding, and the bride made a comment about it that sparked an awkward whispering argument. The bride and groom had a child together who slept in different places throughout the wedding. He was completely indifferent to the whole event. The poor groom clearly didn't want to get married. He got drunk carelessly and ended up sitting at the table staring at nothing. Their dance lasted a minute because he could barely keep up. My mother heard how she found out a couple of months ago that they had another child and they divorced about a month later. The groom has taken full custody of the children and is apparently living his best life in his new state. I don't know what happened to the bride, but rumor has it she remarried almost immediately. I don't think anyone was really surprised. Story 10 the couple got married four weeks ago. They are polar opposites, which sometimes works well. My wife and I are a prime example. I see the main problem is that he doesn't want kids, and she thinks she can change his mind. Was in Stagdo, and he was talking about getting... She thinks he was joking, but I'm not 100% sure because I've known him for 30-plus years, and he hasn't changed his mind since 29 years ago his sister was born. Personally, I think he'll book his before the end of the year, so if they last longer than that, I'll be surprised, story 11. The groom, really drunk and under the influence of cola, refused to leave the reception with his pregnant wife. He said he wanted to have another drink or so with friends. He didn't see the problem because his wife was pregnant, tired, and going to sleep anyway. It took more than 10 years for these unfortunate women to file for divorce. They had two children. Everything is fine with his wife and children now. But the guy is in a coma. He fell off his electric scooter and was drunk. He is not expected to recover story 12. Young couple, about 25, getting married, high school, sweethearts, four kids and three is not his. I'm pretty sure he knew, but everyone knew it wasn't going to last. Less than three years later, she ran away with a woman and ended up in prison for using meth. She left all four of her children, her marriage, and all her responsibilities, but I can't find a good husband. So he raises all four by himself and does a great job. He is a resilient guy and deserves better. Story 13. All I can think about is the wedding between my ex-boyfriend and his now ex-wife. All of their relationships seem to be mostly fights, usually because he was overly critical of her and they were just unpleasant to be around. Neither of them seemed to be enjoying their wedding at all. But I wasn't sure if that was because they weren't really into each other or just because they didn't want to have a wedding. Long story short, they had two kids over the next three or so years. Then he had an affair that lasted a year and got pregnant by another woman. That's how it ended. She ended up texting me after the breakup to ask what she should do about a phone plan after breaking up with my ex. I've always been very into phones and stuff and she knew I was probably the best person she could ask about it. Then I married her about a year later. So that was a bit of a twist. Story 14. Buddy and his girlfriend had been hooking up many times. She was a totally unfaithful psychic, but eventually she got pregnant and they decided, uh, let's get married. I mean, we all know it was doomed. But for the purposes of this thread, at the wedding, the groom's mother, in her welcome speech to the family, mentioned how many times he had come to her upset about their relationship and basically said, when won't work, he could stay with her, super uncomfortable. Shockingly, the bride cheated on him. They broke up, and he still stayed with her. Story 15. The couple's two-year-old daughter sat on the bride's grandmother's lap in the front row, playing with toy keys as her parents exchanged vows. The room was dead silent as they exchanged rings as the girl dropped her toy on the ground, immediately exclaiming, 
Oh no! Loud enough for the whole room to hear, as if she knew what a farce the marriage would turn out to be. Everyone, including the bride and groom, burst into laughter minutes before the ceremony ended. After that, they did not last long. Story 16. Wedding at Lake Tahoe. Wedding the whole family stayed in a rented house for the weekend, so maybe 20 people. Everyone went out for dinner and drinks the night before. The bride sipped her wine and called the party early while the rest of us stayed out and had a great time and lots of drinks. We brought the groom home quite drunk. The bride continued to scream at him and woke up the whole house. Even the grandmother listened as she cursed him. Strong clumsiness. The next day at the actual wedding, the awkwardness was compounded when she acted like everything was fine, and we didn't all hear her tell him what a worthless fool he had been the night before. They lasted four years. Story 17. Thirty years ago, my wife and I were good friends with a woman my wife worked with. The three of us regularly got together for dinner and movie nights. She never talked about her husband, until one day she mentioned that she was getting married. From then on, the four of us got together for dinner and movie nights. At first, it was a casual dinner, but over time he started talking about wanting to sleep with other women before marriage. This, of course, upset his fiancée, but in the end he got his way, and we went back to dinner without him. A few months later, I found out she was pregnant, my girlfriend knew, six weeks after the wedding. The wedding was at her parents' house. The groom didn't care, and his parents were proud that he had found someone he liked enough. At that time, my wife and I were also having problems, so my girlfriend did not go. It turned out that I was the only friend of the bride who was at the wedding. When I come to the wedding, the bride is angry with the groom, his parents, and his friends. I was immediately dragged into her room to comfort her. Her mother and I calm her down enough for the wedding to begin. I knew she loved her boyfriend and thought she did the right thing by marrying him before the baby was born. But it was obvious to me and her parents that he wasn't the one. She was wearing a beautiful dress and he was wearing a t-shirt and jeans. They were two polar opposites who were close in HS. But when they moved to campus, they found they had different ideals and plans for the future. They broke up after three months. She returned to the university town to finish school. Her parents raised the child while her ex-husband continued to sleep with whoever he could find. Before they were married, he was intimate with my girlfriend several times, tried to beat her up. Story 18. I was a guest at a wedding with a friend, and when I met the bride and groom, something was off. She was really nice, nice, and just a warm person. He was a little abrupt. He just seemed a little panicked about the whole thing and it felt weird. Turns out he had been cheating on her for months, decided to go ahead with the wedding and told her after a few months. He is now engaged to a woman with whom he had an affair. Bonus detail to this story. I was celebrating my brother's engagement, and I was talking to a guy I know. His friend started pulling my tie and touching my face. Laughed, and he keeps doing it repeatedly, and I'm like, okay, that's not cool. Ended up headbutting him after he continued to rub his hands on my chest and shoulders. It was a guy whose wedding I was at a few months ago. Story 19. Still playing after about three or four years. My dad met my stepmom online sometime after my parents divorced. I must have been 14 or 15. I had a great relationship with both my mom and dad my whole life. My dad and stepmom started dating for a while. I wouldn't say he fell in love with her, because it seemed very different from when I fell in love with a girl. It was more like he was trying to fall more in love with her and eventually said, Okay this will be enough. But in any case, he tried more and more to make me love her and be close to her. If there were shoots, and she seemed to like a lot of our poor women, she would be kind to me. She seemed to be good. Something wasn't quite right, but she was quite nice then, and I knew my dad was very pleased with her. A year later, they got married. She moved in with us a few weeks ago because of something with her apartment or something. I started noticing little quirks and rude things about her, but I pushed it out of my head because I wasn't going to be unhappy with my dad's new wife. I had fun at the wedding, but the whole time I had a weird tension in the back of my head, like it just didn't feel right. The honeymoon phase was very short. She began to reveal her true colors and became more rude, demanding, and controlling. My dad continued to calm her down and put up with it and act like it was no big deal. It got under my skin, but for a long time I didn't even want to admit to myself that I didn't like her because I thought, I can't help but like my dad's new wife and I certainly can't let him know that. Things got worse and worse. She kept pouring water on me. After about a year and a half of denying my aversion to her, I finally admitted to myself that I didn't like her 
and that she wasn't a good person. Pouring a cow on my dad and acting like it's his job to constantly solve her problems, please her, and take the stick out of her peach. She was mostly reassured only when he spent money on her. I know my dad. He looks a lot like me. I know what people reveal about their character, and he hates it. She told me a lot of things that I knew he was doing. But all this time, he pretended not to see it. Or he was fine with it. I was shocked because I knew he hated those traits in someone else. She literally kicked out her two daughters, both a little older than me in their early 20s, who had moved into my dad's house, into their own apartment. One night I overheard them arguing and one of them yelled, Honestly, Mom, all I want to do is get out and get out of here. I'm not the kind of person to be fake and pretend to like someone or hide my feelings at all and neither is my dad. But I was for my dad. Now I finally have to stop pretending and just be who I truly feel. I started telling my family and friends about her, my stepmom and me, and I became a puppet of her, me and dad, started fighting more and more. All this time, dad really tried to fix the situation and make us both happy. After about six months, last December, I finally decided it was time for me to move in almost exclusively with my mom. I used to switch between them and my dad's houses on the outskirts of town, much closer to my college, but I just wasn't happy when I was there. My life has become much easier. The second semester of college was much better than the first. I popped home to see my dad when I could and wanted to, and things were busy. I just tried to avoid any contact with my stepmother. So it was bad, but it had to be. After college, I spent a little more time at home because I knew he really felt like a cow because of my absence. And I could avoid her because I could show up and leave before she got there. A few weeks ago, I noticed that my dad had become closer to his usual self. He didn't seem angry and unhappy and stressed. He seemed more calm and easygoing and almost apologetic. I stayed home a little longer and we got better. My stepmother seemed even more irritated than usual, but didn't lash out as much as before. Then a week or two ago, I went over to his house for the night and we sat and talked for a while and he said, Hey, do you want to go get something to eat? We went to our favorite restaurant and ordered food. We talked about the normal things we did, and he seemed pretty quiet. Finally, he very delicately told me that the word divorce had been coming up in recent weeks or months. He said she had been throwing it at him for a while and whining about how sick she was. And not to be mean, but to give context, I was nowhere near rich. But she definitely got married, and my dad spent a ton of money on stupid cow for her ungrateful peach. And for a while, he told her, no, we shouldn't. I don't believe in divorce. And at last, he had had enough. If you really think you're that bad, then go ahead. This is enough for me. If you want, then do it. Then he told me all that had spilled water about her in the last three or four years. Most of them were things I hated too, and all of them were things I knew should bother him. Partly through all of his statements, he said, You endure everything for the sake of the one you love. There are things that are hard to put up with. And there are things that I'm not going to put up with. Takes her cow because I finally felt understood and not alone. It all felt like an apology. And I knew the tension between me and mine was finally gone. We both agreed that her scrolling was annoying. From then on, we got along great. Like any good day between us before she appeared. We joked, talked, watched some of our favorite TV shows. Neither of us mentioned it but we were both extremely glad to be back to being the way we were. He seemed less like a drunken dog around her, and he finally stopped putting up with her cow and walking on eggshells. She is still angry, but much more careful, and less likely to lash out. Finally, it seemed to me that it was me and dad again, and not dad and stepmom against me. He said the marriage isn't over yet, and he's still going to try to make it work. But out of all that, I think most would agree it's going to get better one way or another. Story 20 not married yet, but planning to. A friend of mine has a girlfriend that he complains about all the time. He said he hated her behavior. He does not want to marry, but she pushes him to do so, and he is too weak to refuse. She is a nice person, but she cares too much about how people perceive her. Everything she does is based on what she can post on social media and how she can brag about how great her life is. She keeps making my friend take pictures of them kissing and post them online and complains that he doesn't do the same for her. He's very rarely on social media. She also refuses to listen to logic, completely. They live with his family now, and he makes a lot more money than she does, and she constantly criticizes him if he buys anything because she thought they were saving for a house. His response was, no, I'm saving for a house. It's not your money. Anyway, 
One day he announces that he was thinking about buying a wedding ring. We are all bad people. He is too shy to leave her and has never been alone in his entire life. He was always in a relationship. He also wants a prenup and I'm 100% in favor of it for everyone, even if you're both poor. His parents went through a bad divorce and he's seen all the horrible things that come out of it and wants to protect himself. She had a fit when he told her. She mainly accused him of not caring much about her. I predict he will go through with it and be miserable because he is putting all his desires on hold for what she wants. He'll end up spending an incredible amount of money on her dream wedding. Shut me up. And she'll be insufferable on social media. Story 21. My parents, but they are still together even if they hate each other so much. When they told me I was eight and said, because it's easier on taxes, right? They already hated each other, but they stayed together because they had me and my sister. Basically yelled at each other this whole year because dad makes money so he thinks he can be everyone's soul. And mom has to stay with him to pay for me and my sister's school. Story 22. My sister. I was maid of honor and had to give a speech. I didn't like the guy at all, but I also wanted to be sincere in the toast. It was challenging, but mostly focused on how they really got each other. Not that I'm getting my brother stuff. I told my mom that I would guarantee that they would either break up or I would get into a fist fight with him in the next five years. The marriage lasted three years. Thank you. Continue. Story 23. I helped film a wedding. At the reception, the newlyweds gathered with a cake. They arrive at a big event. He's drunk, so she tries to direct him, and he's like, Thank God you've practiced this. In a very poor, sarcastic tone, the bride immediately burst into tears but survived the cut. Apparently, the bride was previously married to a violent boyfriend who promptly killed her in front of her when they got into a big fight. Story 24. Yes. She accidentally got pregnant before they were boyfriend and girlfriend. He had feelings for her. But it was pretty clear that it was nothing more than a marriage of convenience for her and why she accepted the proposal. I thought that the marriage would be happy, that it would last five years. It lasted four. This was as much as she could put up with him before she had enough and filed for divorce. And it was a quiet, messy breakup where he wanted her to change her mind and take him back. Story 25. I attended a wedding on the bride's side when friends of the already Neanderthal groom put a ball and chain on his ankle during the reception. This mess did not bode well for the official event and was very cringeworthy. His concept of submission and submission was from a completely bygone era in the months that followed. Then he considered that a unilateral decision about side effects, which put the last torpedoes in the hull of this marriage, was acceptable for him. Story 26. My mother's third marriage out of four. They already had one bad breakup and then, we're back together, we're getting married. And it was so obvious that two toxic people were going to have a toxic marriage. During the ceremony, I leaned over to my husband and whispered, I give him two years. He replied, I bet three. We split the difference. They divorced after two. Five years and then spent a couple of years in court while she tried to get more money out of him. Story 27. I went to my dad's third wedding. One was to a woman I had never met, the other to my mother. The woman he left my mother for was three years old. Nobody wanted to be there. It seemed like everyone on both sides of the family was there to physically express their disapproval. It was super awkward. There were no toasts, no speeches, nothing. After that, my dad and ex, spoiler alert, stepmom, got into an argument, apparently due to a lot of tension, and ended up driving home in different cars. My brother, his girlfriend, my girlfriend, my now stepbrother and his girlfriend all got really drunk and talked about how this was never going to last. It didn't happen. Addendum. The most awkward part was when my dad gave a short, well, I guess that's the way it goes, crushing speech and then opened it up for other people to say something, but no one did, prompting him to become visibly angry and annoyed at people who attended his wedding. Story 28 actually got a pretty good one. My mom and her husband of about six years, more than once, finally decided to get married. They're both pretty free spirits and we either fight or fall over, never violently or physically. When they decided to get married in the French Quarter of New Orleans, no one on either side wanted to attend. But because we love them, everyone came. The wedding was a cow show, not because of the service, but because everyone acted like idiots. It was clear that this didn't seem like a good idea to anyone, so during the service, people passed moonshine. Something was breaking in the chapel. People were worried, but in general, everyone left, it would seem, in a good mood. 
My girlfriend at the time happened to have two friends who got married in the same chapel right after my mom's. They also had no one with them to witness, so we stayed for their short service instead of joining the party on Bourbon Street. My girlfriend's friend's wedding lasted a whole 15 minutes, but by the time we caught up with everyone, my mom and her new husband were nowhere to be found. My aunt told me that they annulled it, and as soon as we returned to our hometown, my mother annulled the marriage there. They never got back together, lol. Story 29. I was the flower girl at our best friend's son's wedding. It was at a recreation center on an Air Force base, as he was enlisted in the U.S. Air Force at the time. He was so handsome. She was tall, thin, pretty, blonde, and I loved them both. I was so happy that I was chosen to be their florist. I was six years old, so my family left the reception pretty early, so we missed all the drama. It seems that everyone was well broken up that evening, and the groom could not find the bride anywhere. Everyone starts looking, and he eventually finds her in the best man's car, honking. On your wedding day, he loses his mind, she screams. Sloppy mission. Best man sneaks out. Several deputies arrive and restrain the groom. They call his boss and immediately send him out of the country first thing in the morning. I think this is to prevent him from doing anything stupid in the heat of the moment. He breaks up with her, but it really broke him. I felt so bad for him. I even wrote him a letter in which I told him through little girl tears that I wanted to marry him when I grew up, how wonderful he was, and that I would be a wonderful wife for him. The saddest thing is that after a few years he ended up in England, married a bad woman who got pregnant, and when she was about six months old, he was hit by a drunk driver and decapitated in an accident. We were all devastated. A bad person gave birth and hid their son from his father's family. It was awful. Now his son is an adult and flies to us every summer to the States. Just a great, handsome guy, just like his father.